In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through Chapter 6.3, Foreign Exchange Rates. Firstly, we'll be looking at the definition. Then we are going to be looking at the reasons for buying and selling foreign currencies. An exchange rate is the price of one currency measured in terms of another. So essentially, this shows how much foreign money one unit of currency can buy. For example, one US dollar can buy you 65 Indian rupees. One reason for buying and selling currencies abroad is trading goods and services, as currency exchange is needed for cross-border buying and selling. For example, the Brits and the US. If Britain was going to buy some US products from US firms, the US firms will only take the US dollar meaning the Brits will need to firstly buy the US dollar in order to buy their goods and services from the US. And this enables smooth international trade between countries using different currencies. The next reason is speculation, also known as hot money. This is when traders will buy or sell currencies to profit from the exchange rate changes. So speculators supply their own currency and demand another. And the strategy for speculators is to buy low and sell high. The next reason is government intervention. This is when central banks buy or sell currencies to stabilize the exchange rates. This will help control inflation and support export competitiveness. For example, weakening a currency makes your exports appear cheaper abroad, so more exports will be sold. Another reason is the payment of profit, interest and dividends between countries. Multinational companies and investors convert their foreign earnings into their home currency. This is also known as repatriation. This ensures profits, interest and dividends are returned across borders. For example, a US firm in Germany will sell its euros to buy US dollars to pay their investors back in dividends. Another reason is worker remittances. This is when migrant workers send money home in their local currency. Remittances boost incomes and support home country growth. And the reason for this is that the productivity is done in another country, but the money is returning home. And as these workers are sending money home, their countries will experience growth. Another reason is investment in capital goods between countries. Firms will need foreign currencies to buy overseas machinery and equipment. As many of the high-end equipment is not made at home, they are usually imported. Or if a multinational company decides to invest abroad, this enables investment in technology and business expansion. For example, a German car maker can pay billions of yens for Japanese robotics. So now we move on to the determination of foreign exchange rate in foreign exchange markets. Firstly, we need to know what a floating exchange rate is. In the floating exchange rate, the value of a currency is determined by market forces. This is indeed demand and supply. So when a currency appreciates, this is when a currency's exchange rate rises against another. If it depreciates, then the exchange rate is when the value against another currency falls. So this is a quick diagram illustrating the appreciation of the euro against other currencies. So as you can see, when the demand for euros increases due to additional exports or more foreign direct investments, etc., etc., the demand for euros increases from D euro 1 to D euro 2 which results to the quantity of euros increasing from Q1 to Q2, and the price of euros appreciates from P1 to P2. And that's how it works. For depreciation, just do it the other way around. One reason for the change is the changes in demand for exports and imports, as more exports will increase demand for a country's currency, making it appreciate, and fewer imports will reduce supply of that currency abroad. So together, this will push the exchange rate upwards. The next reason is interest rates, as higher interest rates will attract foreign money into the banks, as higher interest rates will allow for investors for higher returns, and this hot money flows will increase demand for the currency, and a stronger demand makes the currency appreciate in value. 
Another reason is speculation, as noted before, as traders buy or sell currency expecting for future price changes. So what speculators do is they buy a currency in hope for that currency to go up or appreciate. And once it's appreciated enough, they'll sell the currency for another currency. And negative speculation can trigger large-scale selling. This is called a run. One example could be the UK, when Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng announced some very unfavourable policies. This led to speculators to sell the pound, pretty much on the day of the announcement, in October 2022. So this caused a sharp and difficult to control currency falls. Which leads on very well to the next point, which is government intervention. So a government central bank can actually use their foreign currency reserves to stabilise the economy. The Bank of England didn't use their foreign currency reserves to buy the pound back to prop it up. However, what they did do was buy government bonds or gilts to stabilise the pound. That's another story for another day. But, for example, in this case, the US can sell their US dollars for another currency to weaken their own currency for reasons such as to export more goods and services abroad, as is cheaper, which increases demand. Now moving on to the consequences of changes in foreign exchange rates. Firstly, consumers. A stronger currency increases purchasing power abroad, meaning they can buy foreign products for cheaper. Or another example, it is cheaper to go on holiday because you are buying foreign currency to use in their country. The effects on exports is that a stronger currency makes exports more expensive overseas, which reduces its demand. For example, the EU customers will buy fewer US goods when the dollar strengthens. For importers, a stronger currency makes importers cheaper for firms. So if they are importing their raw materials from abroad or finished goods from abroad, this reduces their costs and this helps lower cost push inflation in the economy. The effect on the macro economy is that the balance of payments with the strong currency reduces its net exports. And due to a strong currency, exporters will struggle and importers will benefit and the current account position worsens over time. Another effect is employment as falling exports reduce output in the export industries in the domestic country so the lower profits will cause firms to cut jobs domestically. This leads to rising unemployment nationally. So if you are a country that is a net exporter, such as China, you do not want your currency to be too high, as this significantly hinders the country's GDP and income. Next is inflation, as lower spending due to higher unemployment reduces inflation within the economy. A stronger currency will allow import prices like oil and food to be cheaper and the cheaper oil and food will result in a slower price rise economy-wide. And finally, the effects on economic growth. As fewer exports and weaker demand, this reduces economic growth within the country due to the appreciating or expensive currency. Again, this raises unemployment and weakens long-term expansion as a stronger currency can slow the entire economy. And just a reminder, if the currency is depreciating, then the opposite effect would happen. I hope that helped. I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.